In section 3-4 of Algebra 1, we're dealing with graphing functions. So now we're going to take what the equations and the functions that you learned to create yesterday, and we're going to graph them. So, in this sense, we're, before we graph them, we're going to create a table so we know which points to graph, and then we're going to connect the graphs. I mean, connect the points. So, we'll start with these tables that you've probably seen before, and this in the middle one, remember, is your work. So I'm going to take my equation, and I'm going to put it in for work. And it wants me to do it for negative 3, 4, 0, or 3, and 6. Okay, I'm doing this so I have space to work. So, my first one is I'm going to take this x and put it in for x. So, negative 3 minus 3y minus negative 6. And I'm going to solve for y. So, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I end up with negative 3y equals six, negative 6 plus 3 is negative, nope, yeah, negative 3, divide by negative 3, I end up with y equals positive 1. So that's 1. I'm going to do 0 minus 3, y equals negative 6. I'm going to go ahead and divide, um, the zero, so I divide by negative three, I end up with y equals positive two. This is a lot of work because what happens is the, uh, the letter y is not isolated. So if I want to make it easier for myself, I can take this equation and I can isolate y first, that way I can just plug in the equation and I'm good. So, so for the other two, I'm going to solve the equation so you can see what I mean. Um, I'm going to take minus x from here, so I'm going to do negative 3y equals negative 6 minus x, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. My equation now, I'm going to put it down here so I don't get too much into my graph, is y equals negative 6 minus x over negative 3. Now, to some of you guys, that's more confusing. Okay, to others, this is less confusing. This one might be less confusing than what I just did, so you want to forget about that, that's fine. Whatever it is that works on you, just make sure that it's whatever, um, whatever helps you make the least amount of mistakes. So let's try this one, just so we can see, so you can see which one you would prefer. So I do y equals negative 6 minus x, x is 3, over negative 3. So negative 6 minus negative 3 is negative 9 over negative 3. This gives me a positive 3. The next one is y equals negative 6 minus positive 6, because it's positive, so it goes in for x. If this was a negative, then it would be a negative with a negative, so that it had a positive, so remember that. Um, over negative 3, this gives me negative 12 over negative 3, giving me positive 4. So it's up to you on which ones you prefer. I prefer doing it this way because this doesn't leave me much room, but some of you guys might want to do your work on another piece of paper, and that's fine also. But once I have that, whichever method that you choose, I'm going to go ahead and graph it. So I'm going to do always x first and then y. So I'm going to start from 0, go negative 3 up 1. I'm going to do 0 up 2, I'm going to do 3 up 3, and I'm going to do 4 up 6. So it's kind of getting in the way, but it's okay. So here is my equation, which is kind of like a curve, but that's okay because I'm not using graph paper, and you, of course, will be using graph paper. So go ahead and write that one down, and we will do number 2. Number two is, has no equation. 
So, Miss P is going to find the equation real quick. Please be patient. You should be writing this down while I'm going. I'm almost finding. Okay, so the absolute value of x plus 2. So again, I have my x. Okay, I'm going to have my equation. Now this one, the y is already isolated, so I don't have to worry about it. But it doesn't give me a domain or a certain amount of x's that I need to do. If they don't give it to you, all you need to do is come up with your own. Basically, the ones I stick with is negative 2 to positive 2. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Which is also, which is not crooked, I mean, which is super crooked. So I apologize for that. All right, so I'm going to plug it in. Y equals the absolute value of negative 2 plus 2. And the absolute value of, po of negative 2 is positive 2, so it's 2 plus 2, which gives me 4. This one is Y equals the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2. And the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1 plus 2, which gives me 3. Y equals the absolute value of 0 plus 2, and the absolute value of 0 is 0, so 0 plus 2 is 2. Y and the absolute value of 1 plus 2, okay, equals 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then Y equals the absolute value of 2 plus 2 is 2 plus 2, which is so we have some repeats on here, so it's not going to be a line. Usually, most of the time when you're seeing absolute value, you're not going to be seeing a line. Um, so let's graph it. Again, we're going to start with x, and we're going to go to y. So negative 2, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1 to 0. 0 to 2, no, sorry. It's negative 1 to 3, 0 to 2, 1 to 3, and 2 to 4. So it looks like a V-shape. That's what most absolute values would look like. So don't forget to write this down. Go ahead and try page 190, numbers 8 and 9. 190, numbers 8 and 9, and I will see you in class.